The episode starts with a beautiful pink sky, which shows the placard of the Hazumino High School. The sun is almost about to set. At this moment and the river too is sparkling near the ground. The overbridge shows a train passing by the calm and quiet atmosphere in the area. As the Hazumino High School hours are over, all its students are gathered and heading back to their homes as the sun is almost about to set. Now, the main protagonist of this series appears. This boy is a tall, slim 17-year-old high school boy who ran towards something that caught his attention while returning from school. He hurried off towards the place where a pretty high school girl with long hair was standing and watching the sunset. He hesitated to ask her if she was Kachai, which she indeed was, and now the boy was also recognized by Kachai as Maru. Now as they begin introducing themselves, Maru still hesitates about what he should say to her but finally decides to say it. Actually, Kachai was a novelist, and Maru had read her latest novel and had come to praise it. Kachai asked how he liked the novel, and he thought that the novel was amazing. That was the moment when he realized that he had a different feeling about Kachai. This feeling was something that varies from person to person, but this feeling was none other than love. The high school boy, Maru Suharu, fell in love for the first time with Kachai. He also thinks love is not something sweet, but he thinks of love as a poison that spreads into your body, eating you all up, before you even realize what is happening with you. After receiving his compliment, Kachai tears up a bit, getting emotional, as she had put a lot of effort and hard work into writing the novel. With all that, he finally acknowledged that his first love was Kachai and he was already poisoned by love. Next day at school, there are only 11 days left till the cultural program. Now, Kachai was quite a popular student, and some of her classmates were looking at a magazine where Kachai was featured and admiring her beauty. His friend, who was basically a big playboy around the area, asked him about what he was going to do in the confession festival. He wasn't sure about it, but got very flustered as soon as his friend talked to him about proposing Kachai. It was obvious to his friend too that he was in love with her but didn't want to admit it. Maru and his friend were now into a chaos when suddenly Kachai arrived right behind them. As usual, Maru was quite shocked to see her standing right behind him but somehow managed to keep his cool. Meanwhile, Kachai insulted the guys who were looking at her featured photos in the magazine and left the spot soon after. Maru's friend began to make him understand that Kachai was way beyond his league and he should step down honestly as he had very little to no chance of going out with her. But, Maru was persistent that he had a different and unique bond with Kachai, as Kachai spoke to him in a different way, and actually she was a bit different than everyone thought of her. Next, a classmate of Kachai saw her perfect notes and grabbed it with the intention of copying them. Now Kachai was really mad at this and snatched the notes from her and tore it apart in the heat of the moment, which meant she had to stay in the library for a few more hours to remake her notes. Now, as she was in the library, Maru saw her from a distance, weeping a bit while writing the notes once again. After the recess, Maru was once again with his friend, who suggested he should ask out Shida, who was another cute girl if he really wanted a girlfriend. Maru got really flustered and said that although Shida was kind and always looks out for him, he doesn't see her as a potential love interest. Apparently, Shida liked Maru and had even confessed to him, which he rejected. Speaking of her, suddenly she showed up, a cute girl with short blonde hair. She was quite popular among the boys too. Maru was lucky that this girl liked her, as he was also his childhood friend. He was at the same time also trying to avoid her, when she came up to him asking in front of the whole class. She went as far as to announce that Maru had rejected her in front of everyone. This was a huge shock for the whole class, who were staring at them including Kachai. When all of this was going on, Maru once again cleared that although he thought it would be a good idea for the both of them to go out, he just wasn't ready to take the step right now as he already had feelings for someone else. All of a sudden, Shida told him that her asking him out was just a game and a prank, which made him a bit angry and he jokingly started to tease her. Suddenly, Mako, who was talking to Kachai, shouted out that she was going out with Abe, who was a new actor and a popular student in their school. This news made Maru really sad, and suddenly he lost all his energy and headed out of school. Shida was really worried about him, so decided to follow him, where she found him crying by the river. He tried his best so that Shida would leave him alone, as he didn't want to take advantage of her pure soul, but she insisted that it was okay for him to lean on her, because no matter what, she still thought of herself as a big sister to him. She pulled him close, towards her, and said, even if he had rejected her, that wouldn't change her feelings towards him at all, and she would continue to support him however she can. She was ready to be a leaning shoulder for him to cry. After a while of weeping, they both sat next to each other peacefully. That was when Shida suggested that they should get revenge on Kachai. According to her, Kachai was pretty cruel for pretending to be friendly towards him, giving him hints, but later started going out with a more popular guy once she saw the chance. Shida also confessed that she actually hated Kachai, for some unknown reason. 
After hearing about the idea, Maru was really unsure about what to do, as he was really not the type to take revenge on someone who was his first love. Shida was quite excited about the whole idea. Maru, although wanted to, couldn't bring himself to get revenge on her. Then Shida cleverly presented a fake scenario in front of Maru to fire him up for taking revenge. She asked him to picture Kachai and Abe dating for a week, going out on dates, getting closer, holding hands, kissing and so on. This was enough for him to get motivated and pumped up for the action. He was frustrated that only good-looking guys get what they want, whenever they want, without even trying. He was now fired up, and was determined to take revenge on his first love for not choosing him, and was prepared to be hated by her as well. Shida was satisfied with his answer. Shida meant four clover leaves, in which one of the clovers represented revenge, which explained her idea. Maru was now ready to avenge his first love. After reaching home, Maru was watching TV, while preparing his food, when he saw Abe appear on the show, and quickly shut off the TV. The next day, at school, Shida and Maru stay back late to discuss their strategies. Maru had an idea about exposing Abe. As every man had a secret and when he was exposed, Abe and Kachai Bodhi would be labeled as a useless couple together. This was honestly a very naive plan, as getting back at someone using this strategy was really naive and embarrassing, as in the end it would only leave him empty with no real meaning. This was when Shida suggested they start fake dating, to draw in Kachai's attention. This was a brilliant idea, and Maru quickly agreed on it. On the other hand, it was a win-win situation for Shida. After a while, she began coming closer to Maru, which made him flustered and nervous, which was honestly very funny to watch. After that, Shida casually suggested they should kiss to make their fake dating official. This came out of nowhere and startled Maru a lot. Maru was worried and started to get even more nervous as she came closer. He somehow managed to dodge her and escape from the room. He then decided to collect info on Abe in order to expose him. But after a while, he sat on the terrace feeling completely defeated as he got nothing but generic replies from everyone he asked around. That was when Abe appeared and Maru was shocked that Abe actually knew him. After a while, he revealed that Abe didn't just know him, he remembered him, as Maru was a retired child actor who had worked in a lot of series as a child. It was a huge shocking revelation that Maru was actually a child actor. That too a very famous one six years ago. The simple high school boy Maru who was struggling to get his love life on track when the heart of his crush was a known actor back in the days. It seemed almost unreal, but apparently this was the truth. Actually, Maru was born to a father who was a stuntman, and a mother who tried to be an actress but was an unsuccessful one. He had started his acting career, only to please his mom. His mother was the whole reason why he started acting. Actually, it was his mother's dream to make him a successful actor, and he was doing quite a good job in it. Earning praise from his mother was the best part about acting for Maru. Maru didn't start acting to impress the audience, rather to impress his mother. Now, Abe asked him why he was studying at this school, and what was the reason behind him quitting the industry six years ago. Maru refused to answer him as it was a very personal topic for him. Abe went on to reveal something really shocking and jaw-dropping. This was about him. He actually had started his acting career because of Maru. Actually, Abe's dad was a famous actor and had acted alongside Maru for a series. Both of them received a lot of praise for the same, and his dad was really impressed with Maru's work. But on the other hand, his own son, Abe, was quite talentless back then, even after trying his best. Furthermore, he revealed he had already given up on being an actor. That was until Kachai told him that Maru was attending this particular high school. That was when he decided to join the high school as well. After some research, he found out about Maru and Kachai's situationship. He was obsessed with Maru. That was when he decided to start dating Kachai, to get back at Maru and draw his attention towards him. This doesn't end here. The actual truth was that he hated Maru from the beginning and had been plotting his revenge and figured this was the best way to take revenge on him, by humiliating him. Upon hearing this, Maru was furious and tried to get physical with Abe, when he threatened to get him expelled from the school. Maru was disgusted with this guy, and wondered how could Kachai like such a boy. Abe announced that he was going to formally ask Kachai out on the confession festival. He planned on limiting Maru's first love. The next day, Maru asked his friend Kai that he would like to be a part of a play in order to beat Abe at it. He surely knew his way around the audience and the best way to entertain them. But now, the only thing needed was a good script writer. And who was a better script writer than his beloved Kachai? As both of them were deciding on going to ask Kachai for the favor, Shida enters his classroom and once again draws the attention of everyone including Kachai by announcing that both of them were now dating officially. A group of boys who were Shida's admirers tried to gang up on Maru but were soon saved by Shida. On the other hand, Kachai was also looking at them and had their attention when Kai decided that it was the best time for them to ask her for the favor and pushed Maru towards her. Maru as usual became really flustered and tried to run off but Kachai called him back. 
Maru finally requested her for a script for a play at the festival. Kachai quickly agreed to their proposition on the condition they pay her. This was also once again a shock for Kai and Maru, as payment for Kachai was a big deal and was about to be expensive. After that, Kachai and Maru exchanged their phone numbers. This was a positive step for Maru. Later at night, while Maru was cooking his dinner, he got a text from his crush about talking on the phone with him regarding the script. He was really flustered, so much that he began jumping and rolling around, and was so nervous that he didn't know what to reply. Suddenly, his doorbell bell rang. It was Shida or, as Maru called her, Kiro, on the door. She was impressed to see the curry that he had cooked, as it looked delicious. Maru asked about her sisters. Kiro had three younger siblings, all of them being sisters. One was a tomboy and the other two were twins. Actually, all of them were childhood neighbors and both of their parents were really good friends with each other. Ashita's sisters were all really beautiful and were called colorful sisters. While the both of them were joking around, Shida noticed that the whole house was a huge mess. Maru's dad and he both were clumsy people and now his dad was out for work once again. Maru really appreciated Kuro coming by just to clean his house up. While cleaning his desk, a childhood photograph of Maru slipped out from one of the books. It was with a child, who Maru said was Shiro. It was his childhood friend, who had a passion for writing novels. After seeing the photo, Kuro was really suspicious about Shiro as he looked really familiar. Suddenly, Maru's phone rings and it was none other than Kachai. He was acting really funny, and quickly excused himself to go alone in his room to talk to her. While they were talking, Kiro kept on calling him, which made Kachai get the wrong impression about them. But after a while, surprisingly, she suggested that they meet the next day, alone in the library. Maru was really happy, but thought that this might be a trap set up for him. Kiro, after hearing it all, thought it was obviously a trap set by Abe in order to humiliate him in front of everyone and this time by Kachai herself. Next, Kiro said that she didn't think that Maru's decision of starting acting again was right. But Maru insisted that this was his only chance and if he didn't try, he would regret it forever. After that, once again, Maru found himself getting teased by Kiro, so he tried to tease her back by intimidating her, which obviously backfired on him as he got intimidated by her himself. As they were playing around, suddenly he got a text message from Kachai saying that she had prepared a list of questions that she wanted to ask him the next day. The next day at school, Kiro was at her practice at the gym, and Maru was preparing for the skit when Abe and Kachai entered, but as he started to act, he got so overwhelmed that he blacked out. When he woke up, he found himself in the sick room, with Kachai by his side. He apologized for the whole situation, but Kachai assured him and handed him the script and told him the contents about the script. After getting the script by Kachai, he was really happy and thanked her. But suddenly, she took the script from his hand and demanded for her payment. Maru was worried as he didn't have that much cash with him, but Kachai asked him to get up as her payment was not monetary, but something else. Maru realized Kachai knew him from back when he used to act as a child actor but asked her not to expect much of him as he was not the same anymore. She demanded to know why he quit, and that was his payment. He then revealed the sad truth about his quitting. Actually, his mother had finally gotten the chance to act in the series, Child Star as his mother. She was really excited, but during a scene that was being shot, she was so focused on acting, she actually hit her head and led to her untimely death. This was a major shock for Maru as a child, and he soon went into depression. That was the reason that he quit his job. After hearing this, Kachai got really emotional and then left the room. While she was returning home, she started to remember her childhood days, back when she was just a nerd and a shy kid who had no friends and was good for nothing. But once through her dad, she met Maru and was really happy to meet him. His radiant personality gave her a lot of hope as he promised to be part of her story when they grew up. After a few days, Maru no longer wanted to see her as he had quit the industry. This made Kachai really determined to get stronger, prettier and better at everything in order to get back at him. Kachai was none other than Shiro, Maru's childhood friend. Kachai too, actually had fallen in love with Maru, who was her first love too. She regretted hating him for so long without knowing the reason. Now, all the feelings had once again come back to her. After giving the script to Kuro, she once again thought that it was another plan by Abe and Kachai to humiliate him in front of everyone, but despite that being a possibility, Maru wanted to try it out. So, next he asked her to not visit for a few days as he was going to be practicing his performance with Kai, his friend. Later Kai arrived, and Maru started to practice the script. Finally the day has arrived. It was time for the 37th Hazumino High School Cultural Festival to finally start. Everything was decorated and everyone was dressed up in their respective costumes and working to make their class program the best one. Kai was waiting for Maru who finally arrived and both of them looked pretty confident and positive about the act that they had prepared, especially Suharu. 
Next, as they entered the school building, both of them came across Abe who was as usual in a snarky attitude. He mocked him by saying that he might get overwhelmed and start crying on the stage. But this teasing didn't faze Suharu who was ready to give it his best and replied calmly that he could say the same thing about it. After Abe left, Kai confessed that at first he thought that Suharu's idea about taking revenge was really foolish, which triggered Suharu a bit, but then he proceeded to tell him that this was honestly not that bad of an idea. He decided to support his friend in avenging his first love. This fired up Suharu to give out a great performance. A mysterious girl is seen wandering the corridors and hiding around. Next, all of them were busy in the class programs of their own, when Shida decided to ask Suharu how she looked. To her surprise, he complimented her, which made her blush and really nervous, as she had a lot of feelings for Suharu. Next, he was tackled by Shida's fan club for making her nervous, and when they were done, Maru came out and was searching for Kachai's group when his friend told him that she had not arrived yet, but there was a visitor who had come to see them. This visitor was the mysterious girl from before. After they reached an isolated area, Maru couldn't understand who she was and started asking about her identity. This mystery girl seemed really shy and quiet when she approached him and the both of them were standing at quite a distance. After the mystery girl called him Su Chan, he instantly recognized his childhood friend Shiro. Shiro was glad that he finally remembered her, but as he was about to climb up the stairs, she stopped him. She continued that she thought since they had gone no contact for so many years, she figured that he had started to hate her. But that was not the case. He also remembered the promise he made to her. After that, Shiro explained that with enough hard work, she was now an award-winning novelist and also worked hard to become really pretty for him. This confused him, as he had thought Shiro was a boy all along. That was when she climbed down, pulled her hat down to reveal her long silky hair, and finally Suharu knew that Shiro was a girl and none other than Kachai. Kachai after a while, asked him to call her Shiro, and she insisted on calling him Su Chan as always, and also expressed that she felt a bit jealous of Kiro. After that, she confessed to have hated him all these years without knowing the real reason but now, she wished him all the best for his return to the stage. Then, as she was heading back, she saw Kiro standing there and eavesdropping on them, and yes, Kiro was right about Shiro being Kachai, and both of them had now officially begun their cold war. Kiro then, came up to Maru and started feeling really jealous of Shiro but soon, was flustered very easily by the teasing of Maru. After a while, the both of them decided to go out and enjoy the festival heartily. They went out and enjoyed different stalls, and tried different food items from the stalls, and also different activities from the stalls together as a couple. Both of them were having a lot of fun. It was almost time for the confession ceremony to begin, and Kuro wanted Maru to know that no matter what she would support him, but for now, they were officially putting an end to their staged affair. She slapped him to show that they had broken up in front of a couple of students and then left running, but said would be watching him from the sidelines. Maru called after her, but nothing would stop her now. Maru felt empty and really sorry inside for what he had done to Kuro. The confession festival, that everyone was looking forward to, had now officially begun. This was the time that Maru was eagerly waiting for. But somehow, everything seemed too sad. Kuro was sad. Maru was sad about the whole situation and something didn't feel right at all. As the confession program went on, a guy confessed his love to a girl and the both of them started to date officially. But even after having such a lively atmosphere, Maru looked really depressed. It was now almost time for the ultimate showdown. The actual performance that would decide the next course of action for Suharu, Kachai and Kuro. It was now time for Abe's performance. He was so popular in school that most of the girls present there were madly in love with him, mainly because of his handsome looks and charming personality. Abe's performance was the last official performance of the night. This was the performance that everyone was eagerly looking forward to. As the crowd cheered him on, Abe appeared on the stage with the spotlight shining bright on him. This was the stage that he was going to give his ultimate performance and ask Kachai out. He decided to convey his feelings not by giving a speech, but rather by singing and dancing to a song. He was quite graceful with his moves and was also quite good at singing the song. Everyone in the room was impressed with his talent. The band did a good job as well. It was now, the moment of truth. Finally the time had come for Maru to make his first appearance on the stage after his retirement. After Abe was done, Maru made his grand entrance and started singing and dancing. His performance was really amazing, and the whole crowd was amazed to see him perform. Everyone was cheering for him and everyone was enjoying his performance a lot. Maru, too, was enjoying his performance. After all, this was his song, The Child Star's title track. He forgot all his past traumas behind and focused on his performance. This performance made Kiro really emotional. After everything was over, the crowd started cheering for Maru, which made him the obvious winner, and now it was time for him to confess his love towards the person he loved the most. This was the moment everyone was waiting for. 
But soon, things took a different turn as the ending was really unexpected. Actually, Maru had initially started off his speech by confessing that he previously used to like Shiro. But after a while everything changed when he decided to compete with Abe. After everything that has happened he had realized his true feelings which were towards Shida Kiro. Kiro was his true love. He confessed to Kiro in front of the whole school. This was an unexpected turn of events, which made Shiro break down crying while on the other hand, Kiro was feeling butterflies run down her. Finally, her love had been acknowledged. Actually, Maru had realized, through everything that he has been through till now, Kiro was the only person who was with him unconditionally, and loved him no matter what, and was his number one supporter, even though she was rejected by him. But even after that, surprisingly, Kira rejected his proposal in front of the whole school. This was another shocking turn of events. As the event came to an end, everyone was now packing up. Meanwhile, on the terrace, Abe was chatting with Kai, who knew that Abe had purposefully played the bad guy. This was all because Abe himself was a huge fan of Suharu and didn't mind playing the bad guy as long as it meant that Suharu came back on stage. Actually, Abe was like a brother to Kachai whose plan was to make Suharu fall for her and then reject him to take her revenge. But this didn't work as after seeing Suharu and Kuro date, she made up their dating story on the spot but it was too late by then to take it back. But in the end of it all, no one was the ultimate winner in the whole process. This is because Kachai's plan had backfired on her as Suharu no longer loved her, and Shida was now regretting turning Suharu down, and Suharu too was quite shaken up for obvious reasons. So overall, it was definitely a funny ending but sad at the same time. Now, Maru was not able to forget the moment when he was rejected by his love, Shida, that too in front of the whole school. He couldn't even sleep properly because of it, and kept getting nightmares about the same. The scene where he was rejected by Shida kept playing in his mind over and over. Even though he tried to forget it, he couldn't. On the other hand, Shida too was regretting a lot. Rejecting him was just a sort of revenge for her, since he had previously not accepted his proposal. According to her, this problem wouldn't have arisen if he had accepted her proposal the first time. On the other hand, Shiro too, was really sad. Her first love had confessed to someone else, right in front of her. She had worked so hard all these years, to make him fall in love with her, even after succeeding, she failed at last. Both the girls blamed each other for the situation they were in. The next day at school, all the three of them looked pretty worn out, from all the things that were happening around them. As Kai entered, he thought the overall situation to be very funny. After a while, he revealed the real reason why he had helped Maru with his stage performance. Actually, he had a hidden motive behind everything that he had done to help him and make his performance a successful one. He had recorded the whole performance, the whole proposal and the whole rejection and had uploaded it on YouTube. This came as a huge shock for all three of them. The three of them were really shocked and not just that. His YouTube video by then had blown up and gotten millions of people's attention. Their whole personal lives were now not only discussed by the whole school, but also was a hot topic for the Japanese TV talk shows. Everyone was talking about Maru's love triangle. Maru got really pissed off at his friend and tried to tackle him. That was when the mic announced, asking Maru to be present at the staff room. Suddenly, Kai figured out who the person was, demanding to meet Suharu. Actually a famous TV channel had contacted him in order to meet Suharu. This was a famous Japanese TV channel. Kai then called the TV channel and asked them to not overdo it. After a while, an unknown girl, who had long, beautiful straight hair, was short, and was dressed up cutely, entered the school premises. This girl then proceeded to enter their classroom and as soon as she saw Suharu, she called him and ran towards him to hug him as tightly as she could, and almost fell to the ground. Both Kuro and Shiro were alarmed by her presence. She claimed that Suharu was her big brother. But who was this mystery girl? The rest of his classmates immediately recognized her. Actually, she was a very popular actor, who was trending nowadays and had risen to fame, Mamasaka Maria, who was playing the part of the little sister in a very famous series. Suharu too quickly recognized her and petted her. He was happy to see her. As he was catching up with her, Shiro and Kuro started getting jealous and came up behind him to inquire about this girl and his relation with her. This girl quickly recognized both of them and claimed that both of them as girls from his past. This enraged the both of them even further, as the girl proceeded to talk about her relationship with Suharu, and how she would make him forget all about the girls from his past. Suharu cleared up that, actually, he was her senior, and the both of them from the same agency, back in the days. Mama Suk added that, not just her senior, but he had actually taught him everything in the industry and a lot of other things. After that, Momo dropped a bomb on everyone by suddenly announcing that her first love was actually Suharu. Later at lunch, Kai treated Suharu to a pizza to make up for him uploading the video on YouTube without his consent. Suharu too was pretty pissed at him for the chaotic morning that he went through due to Momo coming to their class and of course all of that was Kai's fault. 
deep down inside. He also thought that after all, the video had helped him get a boost if he ever wanted to revive his acting career, so that wasn't a negative thing at all. Later, after a bit of conversation, Tetsuhiko revealed that the pizza was actually sponsored by Rene. This girl was quite cute, and Suharu couldn't keep his eyes off her, all for the wrong reasons. Rene claimed to be a jack-of-all-traits and also thought that Suharu was really funny. Rene was a first year in their school. As they were having their conversation over the pizza, Rene also noticed that Suharu and Tetsuhiko continuously argued and wondered why they were even friends if they didn't get along. As she was about to ask the question, she was interrupted by Kachai, who came in to ask Suharu for something. She was feeling really nervous and the whole class noticed that Suharu was now getting approached by the unapproachable Kachai. After a gentle push by her friend Mako, she was finally able to convey her real feelings and talk to him. But then again, it was shocking when she blurted out a proposal to Suharu. That was when her friend finally stepped in and corrected her for blurting out the wrong thing. Actually, what she wanted to say was that Shiro's father, who was one of Suharu's sponsors, hadn't seen him for a long while and would like to meet him. So, that was the reason Shiro had invited him over to his house. After that, Kai passed a backhanded comment to Kachai, which pissed her off, but Suharu asked her to let it go, as she was also mad at him about the video uploading as well. After Suharu asked her, she forgave him, which left Kiro now. Suddenly, Kiro appeared too. Kiro was about to say something to Suharu when she was completely shut off by Shiro. Kiro could not say anything at that moment, and was completely frozen with everything that had just happened. She tried to speak up to defend herself, but after seeing her, Suharu had a meltdown and was acting really funny in front of her. He ran off to hide behind Shiro, who shielded him while his meltdown. Hearing Shiro, Kiro went away from their classroom with tears in her eyes. Later, Suharu was at the riverbank, talking to Tetsuhiko on the phone to confirm if there was any media near his house. Tetsuhiko thought that everything seemed really fishy as suddenly the press had stopped pursuing him. It was as if some outside force had interfered in the whole process. Later Shida was seen having a private conversation with Tetsuhiko. Finally, after a long day, when Suharu returned home, he was surprised to see his door unlocked and he was greeted by Momo. Who was waiting for him? He was totally surprised. She quickly locked the door and dragged him inside while he demanded to know how she got his house keys. When he reached the dining room, a dinner was prepared for him which consisted of his favorite foods. This reminded him of his mom. After their dinner, both of them were chatting when Suharu mentioned that Momo used to be a troublemaker back in the day. Actually, Momo had come to see him and talk to him privately. She had known the real reason for him quitting, but couldn't bring up the courage to go actually talk to him. Seeing the video, she remembered him and then finally decided to come up to talk to him. She had come to him to ask for a favor. This favor was that he should come and talk to the president of their agency. He also came to know that his former president had retired and gone on a world trip with her husband. After that, Momo suddenly saw that Momo had handed him two visit cards. Actually, the president of the CEO wanted to meet Kiroha as well. As they were having this conversation, suddenly, Kiro's three sisters came banging on his door. At first, he was really perplexed with the situation and quickly hid Momo's shoes and asked her to stay inside a room. After that, he opened the door, and all three Shida sisters came storming in. All of them were doubting that he was hiding a girl inside his room, and had come to ask about why their sister was behaving differently than usual. A very shocking news was revealed by her sisters that Kiro had developed amnesia. He was totally shocked to hear that his friend Kiroha had developed amnesia. Apparently, she had been acting way different than usual. Actually, she was eating her meals as usual and also had forgotten about her weird habits of putting honey on her sashimi or whipped cream on her rice. As they were having this conversation, suddenly Momo decided to come out of the room and greet Suharu. This confirmed all their suspicions about him hiding another woman. Now it was sure that their sister was suffering because of Maru. After they were having a wrong idea about the whole thing, he interrupted them and corrected them about the whole misconception. He cleared that this girl was like his sister and was the famous actress Mamasuke Maria. After that he began to introduce all of them to her. Momo was now trying to impress these sisters and especially Midori since she was a simple girl and easily predictable. Momo was leaning too close to Suharu, which angered Midori a bit and she came to separate them from each other. After that, once again, Momo tried to bait her and lure her to make her like Momo. This plan obviously didn't work, although Midori didn't particularly dislike Momo. Soon after their conversation, Momo decided to leave as she figured that they might be having an emergency that day. This was due to them suddenly rushing over to his house in such a panic. Actually, their sister Kiroha had forgotten everything after the summer break and also had forgotten all about her proposal. This was actually true, as she couldn't remember anything, even after seeing their viral video. After a while of trying to find the perfect solution, one of the twin sisters suggested that he commit seppuku, which was hilarious. 
since he was in a lot of pressure of getting rejected by Kiroha in front of the whole school. After a while, the sisters informed him that Kiro wanted to talk to him the next morning and head to school with him. This was a bit tough for him, but finally he chose to do it anyway. While leaving his house, one of the twin sisters, Akane, told him that she would be happy for him no matter what, even if he chose to return back to show business or if he chose to sacrifice everything for love. The next morning, he headed off to school as usual. Kiroha was already waiting for him outside her home. She was waiting for him to have a serious conversation about everything that happened. After that, she told him that she was really sorry about everything that was happening but she didn't remember anything that had happened after or during their summer break. Even if she tried to remember things after seeing the video, she was not able to do it. As she was about to hold his hand, Maru backed off, which made her a bit sad once again. She just wanted to be someone whom Maru could trust fully once again. After that, Kiro tried to walk out of the scene, but Maru insisted that nothing was wrong and assured her that everything was alright and it would be for the best if they stayed together as friends for now. Suddenly, as they were having a conversation, a car pulled up in front of them. Kachai got out of the car, surprisingly. After seeing Shiro, Maru felt a bit happy. Actually, since a lot of press and media was after Maru, it was for the best that for now, he traveled back and forth to school by a car, where he was safe from all the media harassment rather than walking. This obviously made Kiroha jealous, as they sat in her car making their way to the school. On the way to the school, Maru let her know that Kiroha was having a bit of amnesia since last night, but quickly Shiro said that that was probably all fake, according to her girl's intuition, which is generally accurate. Maru had a really brilliant idea to test that theory. Later that day at the library, Kiroha and Maru were sitting together in order to have lunch where Maru had prepared a lunch for him. This was odd, but made Kiroha really happy. Kiroha had a phobia of not eating octopus sausages. So the plan was to test if her amnesia was actually real and if she remembers not liking octopus sausages. To his surprise, Kiroha didn't even flinch while eating the octopus sausage. This confirmed the fact that she did have amnesia. After that, he informed her about the meeting with the CEO of the acting agency. He hands her over the card and explains the whole situation to her. Kiroha was a bit disappointed that he finally decided to go see the CEO and pursue his career, but he still wasn't sure what to do. He decided to go and talk to the CEO anyway. Kiroha decided to support his decision, as she was finally happy that he was finally actually doing something for himself. He then thanked Kiro, who had advised him to act for someone else, in order to give his best performance on stage, which worked well for him and made his performance a grand hit. Kiroha actually really cared about Maru, but didn't want him to get hurt once again, the memories of his traumatic past hitting back when he started to act. But at the same time, she also wanted him to be happy, so she decided to support him anyway. He was actually really sad that she had lost her memories, but there was nothing he could do about it. All of a sudden, Kiroha stood up and hugged him from the behind and started to comfort him regarding everything he was worried and was overthinking about. She handled everything really maturely, although her memories were still lost and not recovered. She decided to go with him to show business. Although she herself wasn't interested in the business, she wanted to support him. Suddenly, Kachai and Kai entered the room. Apparently, she was monitoring them and their activities with the help of the camera that Rina had set up. She was happy that he had finally chosen to go and see the show business CEO. Now, after a while all of them sat together with their lunches. Kai asked Kachai if she was happy with Maru's decision and if her main motive with Maru was for him to act in one of the scripts or stories written by her. She actually wanted that. But here Kai said that, by saying this, she was actually contradicting herself. Kai suggested that all of them, including Shida, start a club called the Ultramarine Channel, where Suharu could show off his acting skills and Kachai could write stories, where Suharu would be acting. By this way, Suharu didn't even have to quit high school to pursue his job and his passion. They would be uploading these videos to YouTube and gain more popularity. This seemed like a fun idea for all of them. And they agreed, especially Maru, who was totally invested in this idea. After that, Kai had one last request which was to let him accompany them to see the CEO of the show business. Suharu knew that something was going on in his mind, but decided to agree to it anyway. Shiro also wanted to join them, so all of them left for their destination. After reaching the destination, Momo was waiting for Suharu, and Momo was a bit nostalgic remembering the first time they met in the same place. Both of them started praising each other's talent for acting and how they both motivated and influenced each other indirectly and directly to become better versions of themselves and do a better job at acting. The CEO, Hardy Shun, was a man who was a bit smug, but Maru tried to impress him. He also let the CEO know that he was not ready to arrive at a conclusion yet, and also Shida let the CEO know that she came there to decline his offer. After hearing that, the CEO tried to bait them into the money trap, 
offering a lot of money and promising them both huge success and fame if Maru returned and Shida debuted. Even after offering them 3 million yen for acting in commercials, Shida declined but Maru was really impressed and swayed away easily for a temporary span of time. After a while of the CEO and Shida arguing back and forth, the CEO stooped really low and resorted to insulting her personally and her parents as well. This was not taken well by Maru, who simply grabbed the wine bottle and poured it all over his head, as he was too angry by his behavior with Shida. After a while of the CEO trying to negotiate with Shida, he eventually became frustrated with her continuously negative response about the whole situation. Even after luring her in with a lot of money and other traps, nothing seemed to work on her. This angered him and he started attacking her personally, asking if her parents had raised her right at all. After that, she was pissed off. Suddenly, Maru stood up and grabbed the bottle of expensive wine and poured it all over his head. This was a very bold move for him, which shocked everyone in the room. The CEO couldn't believe the audacity of this young boy. Now, Maru couldn't hold in his anger when his childhood friend was being insulted by this man in front of everyone. That too at such a personal level. The CEO stood up, wiping himself, and started to call Maru and everyone around him trash. That enraged Tetsuheko, and he started getting physical with the CEO. Shida tried to stop him, and Maru also tried to hold him back. Then the CEO called someone ordering the person on the phone to call the police on them, and next threatened them to stay there. This put Maru in a huge panic, but Kai was really calm in this whole situation. The CEO left the room, and Kai proposed a plan. All of them would testify that nothing had happened in the room and everyone would be out of trouble that way. Everyone agreed to the plan, but Shida could not bring herself to support this plan. This was totally against her morals and she didn't want Maru to do something so dishonest, and this would probably be disadvantageous for them in the long run. After a while, Shiro's dad entered the room with the CEO. Actually, Shiro's dad was the one making the particular commercial. Maru was happy to see him, and Shiro's dad was surprised to see his daughter and all of them in the room. Now after hearing everything, her dad too was really confused as to what to do in this whole situation. He didn't know what would be the right thing to do. As the situation was really complex here, everyone was correct morally, but legally they had committed a crime and Shun had the upper hand here. After listening to everyone, Momo proposed that they solve everything peacefully with the help of a commercial contest. The commercial that had the most views would be the winner. The condition was that if Shun's team won, then Maru had to listen to all his demands and work for him. And if Maru's team worked, Shun had to remain silent about the whole situation. Shun had quickly agreed, thinking that he had the upper hand. But here, Maru was a bit disappointed as Momo decided to work with the CEO in the commercial. Momo felt it would be only fair for everyone, with the balance in power, and to Shun as well, since she was technically a part of his agency. Tetsuhiko's idea about the Ultramarine Channel would now be used as the Ultramarine Alliance, where they all would be making a commercial produced by Shiro's dad. The next day, all of them gathered in their school club room in order to discuss everything in detail and finalized everything. The commercial was of a drink, Aquamine, and they had to advertise about this drink. Momo's story was also very sad. Actually, she had endured a rough childhood due to her parents' constant fighting, making their house an unfit place to reside. But thankfully, she had the support of her elder sister. Her elder sister always guided and supported her in every step. When her sister was in middle school, the both of them decided to not go through this toxic environment and run away from their house. Her sister had sacrificed her youth in order for Momo to have a secure childhood. Momo hated her situation, where she couldn't do anything to help her sister out. That was when she decided to join an acting agency, where she met Maru. Maru was like an older brother and an inspiration to her from the beginning. She wanted to catch up to Maru and prove to him that she was also really talented and blessed with good fortune. Maru promised to wait for her until then. Suharu had basically saved her from the darkness back then, but when he quit acting, everything went dark for her once again. Momo was watching Suharu's viral video when her sister came in and she welcomed her. Both of them then started to watch Suharu's commercial. The commercial was a good one, but it was as if the main focus of the ad was Suharu and not Aquamine, the sports drink. She was happy about the commercial, but also felt something lacking about the commercial that they had made. She was pretty sure that her commercial would win after seeing their missing spots. After that, Momo called Suharu, who was determined to not give up, so the contest wasn't over yet. Momo was really happy that Suharu had seen her acting and thought of her work to be really impressive and tough to beat, which was why he decided to take a second chance at defeating her. He was already shooting at the time, and excused himself. The next commercial was something totally out of the world and next level. Suharu's acting was crazy, the cinematography, everything in this commercial was perfect and there was no way that Momo could beat this one. Easily, Suharu's video had won by twice as many votes. Momo was happy that she wasn't alone. She once again was finding the light. 
After that, Suharu was overjoyed and started to eat carbs. He had controlled his diet for a long time, controlled his weight, to shoot the commercial. All of them were pretty happy and satisfied with it. Later, Shiro got a message from her dad that he was waiting at the car to meet Tetsuhiko. When Tetsuhiko reached there, Shiro's dad found out his ulterior motive after doing a bit of digging on his past. Actually, Hardy Shun was his father, and he had formed the Ultramarine Channel to get back at his dad. Kai was shocked, but after a while, he was assured by her dad that he would be taking care of all the legal issues from now on, and he didn't have to worry about it. As he was returning from the car, he was once again stopped by Abe. Both of them agreed that they hated adults, but Kai pretended to not recognize Abe, so that he doesn't have to answer any of his questions or make small talk with him. Abe requested to know how everything ended, because he was working behind the scenes to save them. By chance Hardy Shun was to try anything funny. Then his dad would step in to save them. The only reason Abe was so keen on helping them was to see more of Maru on the screen, since he was a big fan of Maru. But after all this, the top winner wasn't Maru or Shiro, but Shida and himself as Shida didn't want Maru to join show business, but also be passionate about his acting, and Kai got to defeat his father, whom he despised. Before everything had started, Kai and Shida had discussed everything beforehand, about what to do and what not to do. This was all due to the fact that Kai thought that Shida could help him and vice versa. Kai sort of revealed his goal to her, and she too revealed his plan to Kai. Actually, she was taking her amnesia the whole time. Since she didn't have the courage to go and confront Maru head-on, she decided to choose this path. So that was the gist of it. Where the tables had turned and both Kiro and Shiro now had an equal chance with Maru. But later, another surprise came to them. Momo had transferred to their school now, which made Shiro and Kiro jealous, but she too wanted to be a part of the Ultramarine channel. She had quit the agency to be beside Maru, and also continue acting. Now, the both girls were pissed off and started to chase Maru. Maru somehow was saved by Rene, temporarily. When Rene asked him about his friendship with Kai, he explained that Kai was the only one who wasn't after his fame and did things beside him. And all of a sudden, Kiro and Shiro had found him and had started to chase him once again. Later after school, Kiro and Maru were going home together when she asked him about dinner. That was when Maru realized that she was starting to remember her sense of taste from before. After a bit of conversation, Kiro revealed to him that, actually, her amnesia wasn't real. This totally pissed off Maru. Maru was so surprised and shocked that he almost sat on the ground and looked really depressed. After pulling this unbelievably huge stunt on Maru, Kiro was shocked that he didn't like the way she reacted after being caught. Her response was totally casual, which made him feel like he couldn't trust her anymore, as he once again was played by her. He revealed that he was so sad that he even cried over it. After a while of her fooling around, he called her a black-hearted person, which was like a huge insult to her and also a huge deal for her. It was equivalent to declaration of war on her. But even after them fooling around and playing around, she didn't accept defeat. She was adamant on not wanting to apologize to him. And after a while of him called her a black heart, she beat him with her bag, and he was confused as to why it happened to him as he was the one getting tricked. After reaching home, Maru started regretting the things that he had called Kiro, as she was now probably planning a revenge on him just to get him back, which was going to be a way worse situation. This was honestly a very frightening thought for him as he was totally not prepared for anything worse. Although, his angel side tried to make him see the reality of the situation. His negative side overpowered it with the possibility that Kiroha just wanted petty revenge from him. On the other hand, Kiroha too was regretting everything and was really anxious about throwing fits in her own room. She was confused as to why Maru wasn't understanding her hints without her conveying him anything logically or directly. She was afraid that this might have driven him even farther from her. On the other hand, Shiro too was wondering why Kai had said that she was now at a less advantageous position with Maru, as his and Kiro's relationship was back to normal now. After that, she decided to call him, to give him a proposition with the assumption that he would help her. He clearly said that he would only help the party who was more interesting to him. Shiro wasn't really all up for the idea, but somehow she had to do it, as she had no other option other than approaching Kai for help. The next day, as usual, all of them had gathered at the club room of the Ultramarine Alliance. Momo too was present there. She was to join their school officially from the next week and was excited to work with everyone else. Kai then began to explain the rules of the group to everyone who was present there. Any decision of the group has to be taken by the consent of each and every member. Every member had the right to veto, which meant that if a single person didn't like the idea, then the idea would not take place, even if the idea had the majority votes. Everyone had the right to vote, the right to submit proposals and each person carried one vote. But, the catch here is, the right to veto can be applied only once per month, and the person has to sign after using it. Their group also had an unofficial member, who was Rene. 
They also needed the votes of all the members of the official team to recruit new members. Now, the idea for the next shoot was suggested by Kai, which was to have three female members in swimsuits for the video. This was going to be for a music video. They also didn't have to worry about the money, as they had recently won the commercial ad and had plenty of it to shoot a music video. Maru was completely satisfied and happy with the plan, but none of the girls were ready to be put on display in front of the whole world in swimsuits. Hiroha opposed it at first, but then this idea was supported by both the other girls as well. Then they decided to vote, which was anonymous, and surprisingly the majority was in favor of swimsuits, which was surprising as all three were opposed to it. Shiro blamed Kuro for betraying them, but then another vote was conducted which decided that no swimsuits would be encouraged during the shoot of the video. Kai suggested they shoot at Okinawa which was still sunny, and also that they do it the same weekend. Actually, it was not possible for Kiroha as her parents had gone out on a business trip that week, and her sisters would be all alone. Kai was spontaneous and asked her to bring her sisters along as well, as unofficial members of the group. This too had another problem as her sisters had some pre-planned activities on Saturday, so Kai then asked her to come on Sunday and they'd shoot the video on Monday. After they were done discussing all the details, Shiro suggested that she'd ask Mako to join them, but surprisingly she declined her offer. It was all decided, and all of them now were set to begin their journey to Okinawa on the weekend. But suddenly, Hiroha raised another important concern which was about their mid-term exams, which were coming up soon. Actually, Maru had scored very bad grades in his previous examinations, so Kiroha was really worried about his next examinations. She asked if it was okay for them to conduct a study camp for those students who were bad at scoring good grades for the mid-term exams. Now once again, it was only Maru who was bad at studies. Another thing was revealed that Momo actually didn't have to prepare for their entrance examination, but made her way into the school by money and power, and it was also clear that she too wasn't that bright of a student. After that, Kai also revealed that they would be staying at one of Shiro's dad's private islands. That was when Kiro understood that Shiro was working with Kai behind the scenes and everything was her plan. She got really defensive and pissed off, which created another disagreement and argument between her and Maru when he tried to defend Shiro. Later that night, AI had come to Maru's house to clean the home because Kuro wasn't able to make it. She cleaned and while cleaning Maru teased her a bit and after that, Maru started to prepare her favorite dish, curry for their dinner. After having a bite of the curry, Ai was really impressed as usual. She was so invested and impressed that she kept on complimenting him. Suddenly, she asked if he and her sister had a fight, as she could understand that something was going on between them. After a while of hesitation, Maru admitted that there was in fact something going on between them and explained the whole situation to her. After hearing the whole situation, she couldn't come to a concrete conclusion, but she totally understood the whole situation. She knew that her sister was technically wrong, but not morally wrong, because Maru was an extremely practical person and honestly, not everyone was like him. Later on she added that she just wanted him to be careful while on the trip and try to make up with her sister. On the other hand, Kai was thinking about when Shiro's dad had discovered that Rina Asagi was actually his half-sister, and he had a different mother than her. Rena didn't know about it and he requested him to keep it a secret. After that, he got a call from Shiro, revealing her plan about getting Suharu to confess to her during the trip. The next day, all of them had reached Okinawa, where it was still summer. Suharu was mesmerized by Shiro's beauty. When Maria's sister figured out what was going on with him and threatened him to not make her sister cry. Later as all of them were wandering in the markets, Shiro was shocked when she learned that Momo could cook. Momo attacked Shiro by accusing her of not knowing how to cook. This angered Shiro, who decided to propose a cooking competition between the both of them. Now as the contest was getting decided, this once again put a lot of stress on Maru, as he was really confused with the whole situation. Not only that, Maru didn't want Shiro and Momo fighting, but it was decided. Kai suggested that he take it easy, as all they had to do was eat it. Maru was fixated on making Kai eat everything as well, and their quarrel went on for a while, when Momo's sister interfered between them. Then she decided on a common theme for the contest, which should be hot pot. Nobody had objections, but Shiro tried to suggest making fried chicken a few times but her voice was unheard and her suggestion was disregarded completely. After that they went grocery shopping, where Rene also was hiding and shooting them, when Momo asked her to join them and have fun while on the trip. Rene wasn't sure what to do as she wasn't used to such friendships, since she had only been out on school trips and thought that she might not fit in right with all of them. As all the girls were having lunch at a restaurant, Maru was observing them from a distance and was thinking about Kiro. That was when Kai interrupted him and asked if he was thinking about Kiroa, where Maru got flustered and nervous and looked really predictable after that. Kai asked him about his fight with Shida, which he thought was pretty normal behavior for the both of them, since they were getting into frequent fights, but Maru insisted that this time it was not their regular fighting. 
After that Kai suggested that he create a harem with all the girls around him, which obviously Maru didn't support. But later, Kai went on to add that it would be better if he tried to make everyone around him happy and create a balance and peace in the trip. Maru thought no one listened to their conversation, but he was wrong, as Momo and Rina were eavesdropping on them. Later Momo was shocked to be revealed to such information about how men had conversations and thought of girls, although this didn't affect Rina as she was used to it and also aware of it. After that, Momo asked about her position romantically with Maru, to which Rina answered honestly that she was pretty far behind the other girls, and also she was not yet being recognized as a romantic interest by Maru. She thought this trip was the perfect chance for her to get close to Maru. After that all of them got in the car and started to make their way to the private villa on the island where they were supposed to be staying for their video shoot. After a while, the villa was in sight. It was a beautiful villa. Suharu was so impressed by the villa that he started bowing down to Shiro, which was a funny sight for everyone, but pathetic at the same time for Rina who started to make fun of him for bending down to people with money and power so easily. After that, they entered the villa, and once again, they were mesmerized by its beauty. The villa was so pretty and aesthetic. Later, Shiro explained to them which rooms they would be staying in. Kai and Suharu would share a room. Momo and her sister in one, Asagi and herself in one and the rest of the two rooms were for the Shida sisters who were going to arrive the next day. As all of them were chilling at the balcony, Maru asked Shiro if they all could get in a bath together with swimsuits, which of course Shiro didn't agree upon. After that, Kai walked up behind them jokingly and pushed Maru from the balcony to the waters beneath which was hilarious. Maru started throwing water and everyone was having a good time all together. On the other hand, Akane was praising her elder sister Kuroha for getting so far within a few days. Kuroha was satisfied with the work she had done. Actually, she had prepared notes for Maru so that he could study and pass the midterms exams with good scores. Although they were fighting, that didn't change the fact that Kuro was his elder sister and she had to take care of him and help him. As she was talking to Akane about how Maru was skipping study, she began imagining fake scenarios where Maru was having fun with the other girls who were in swimsuits, and especially with Momo who was trying to get close to him in her imagination. This thought made her so pissed off that she almost broke their window glass as she was in the middle of cleaning it. Soon, Akane called her sister Midori to come fast due to what was happening at their house. Meanwhile, Maru was actually having a lot of fun while playing ball with Momo while Rina was shooting them. Kai advised her to stop shooting and join them since she too was allowed to have fun. Rina quickly took off her t-shirt and began enjoying her time with Momo. Maru was enjoying the sight when he was tackled down by Kai because Maru was staring at Rina, who was his sister. Suddenly, he got a message from Shiro, which was about her wanting to meet him privately on another beach to show him her swimsuit. With this message Maru was overjoyed and wanted to waste no further time. She gave him the directions of the beach, and he excused himself from everyone and began heading towards the beach. As he reached the beach, Shiro was already there, waiting for him to arrive, but was a bit far from the bench. Maru was waiting at the bench. When Shiro came in and after she did, he was so shy that he couldn't even look up at her. After he looked up, Shiro stood there but she was not exactly in a swimsuit or a bikini. She was wearing a shrug around, and when Suharu asked her about it, she replied that she did not want others to see her, so she had covered herself, as she wanted him to be the first one to see her. After that, she took off the shrug and revealed her true outfit. This outfit looked really pretty, as this was a white bikini. Suharu was really mesmerized by her beauty, once again, and started to compliment her, calling her gorgeous and all sorts of things. This moved Shiro, as she sat down on the beach, because she couldn't believe that Suharu was complimenting her, which she longed for so long. After that, she asked if she could sit with him, and he started to make space for her. Surprisingly, she came and sat on his lap, which was a bold move by her, which made the both of them really shy. They got even closer, and suddenly, Suharu's phone rang and Shiro got up from his lap. Next moment, it was Momo on his phone. Momo was actually watching them from afar. Not just Momo, but all the others were present there. After that, Momo told him that actually, Rina was recording them. As Suharu and Kachai looked behind, they saw all of them. And Momo came out running from behind and grabbed Suharu demanding to sit on his lap too, while Kachai tried to stop her. Later, at the villa, Rina was tutoring Maru when it was discovered that Rina was actually a scholarship student, and at the same time, Momo was practicing their dance. As she was done with her part, it was now Kachai's turn. Kachai wasn't good at dancing, and couldn't perform well. After observing her moves, Suharu advised her to act cuter and better, and then, he proceeded to display how to do it. He did it amazingly, and everyone was impressed by his moves. After he was done, he advised her to dance for someone else, that way she could perform better. Later when the sun was about to set, Momo was preparing the hot pot and she asked Suharu with some help. After that Suharu asked her where Shiro was. Shiro was actually out on the beach sitting alone. 
She was depressed as she had practiced making fried chicken, as it was the favorite dish of Suharu. Suharu then came in and sat beside her. He actually heard what she was saying. Although the hot pot was the theme of the cooking contest, he wanted her to make fried chicken for him as it was his favorite dish. After that, Suharu and Kachai held each other's hands, and Suharu was about to kiss her when suddenly both of them backed off. Then, they decided to head back. As they were heading back, Kachai followed him. The next morning, Shida had finally arrived at the villa while everyone was asleep. Maru was woken up by the Shida sister's arrival. The next morning, he was woken up by already present there. It was 11 in the morning already. He was so shocked to see all of them in the morning. And as usual, Kiroha started to tease him and the both of them started fighting once again and Midori tried to handle Kiroha while Ai apologized to Maru on her sister's behalf. After the whole drama was over and all of them were settled after getting ready, they gathered together in the living room in order to discuss their further plans. The plan was to see Shida's dancing skills at first, and then they could study for a bit and those who needed to practice would practice the dance at the same time. After everything was over Kai asked if they could play on the beach, even if it was only for an hour, as of them kept chatting and Shiro thanked Maru for his advice. Next, all of them were on the beach already. Suharu and Kai were the first ones to arrive on the beach, and they were followed by the Shida sisters who looked really pretty in their swimsuits. After a while, Maru asked where Kiro was and soon, Kiro too arrived. Kiro looked stunning in the swimsuit, and Haru was mesmerized by her. After she arrived, Kai teased him for a bit. Soon, all the others arrived as well. On seeing Kachai, Midori was really surprised and impressed since Kachai was really beautiful. She told her sister that she was in no way a match to Kachai, as Kachai was ahead of her in all aspects and also was in drinking water, she did the same thing. This was a dangerous weapon that she had and was using against him shamelessly. Maru was really struggling with everything that was happening to him. He was really scared of Kiroa, but was determined to not forgive her until she asked for forgiveness from him. But the trick that she had pulled this time was unbelievable and it was really hard for him to remain mad at her, considering the fact that he was in love with her. While thinking all these, his hand got stuck inside a shisha. After a while, he had to head back to the villa to start his study session. Hiroha was tutoring him today and had created a test paper for him to solve. Hiroha was a really good teacher and actually cared about Haru. After a while, Haru figured out that Kiro had carefully prepared a test based on the sums that he had gotten wrong before and he was really proud of her and grateful at the same time. Actually, he got into the high school only because Kiro had tutored him before their entrance examinations. He was finally feeling motivated and decided to start with his studies properly. Today was the day when they had to set up the stage for their music video shoot. After the both of them were done studying, they headed back to the beach and started helping and setting up the stage. Everyone was equally helpful and helped out with the setting up. As he was putting up the speakers in random spots, Akane asked him where he was going to place them finally. Maru remembered that Akane was actually in the light music club at school, which meant that she had a lot of knowledge about all these things and would know better what to do with these things. Upon further inspection it was revealed that she had actually not been active in the club, as no actual activities were going on in the club, so she had stopped going to the club meetings to waste her time. All her club members did were talk trash and played no real music, which was a big problem for Akane. So she decided to not attend the music club after the summer break. After that, Akane told him that she was unaware that he had so many friends, which made Maru think that he didn't look the type to make a lot of friends. But that was not what Akane meant. When Haru talked to all these new people, it just made her feel like he was drifting far away from her. After that, Maru called Kai so that Akane too could help them with her suggestions to set up the speakers. After everything was done setting up, the both of them loved Akane's work and Suharu was impressed with her. After that, all of them had fun while having a barbecue party. Shiro's legs were still hurting, while Midori was taking a look at it, and Suharu too seemed really concerned with her leg. Hiro noticed this, but kept silent about it. Later during night as Haru was wandering on the beach, he found Shiro practicing by the beach, when suddenly she got a call from her friend Mako. Haru decided to hide and eavesdrop on her. Shiro talked about how she had decided to lean on Suharu instead of catching up on him, but not be dependent on him unconditionally at the same time. After that, as that was the case with her too, the both of them were in love with Haru, even after knowing that the both of them had no chance of winning his heart back. The poison of first love had affected them as well. The next morning, Shiro was happy to see Haru and he greeted her back, which was once again noticed by Kira. After that, they started the shoot for their music video. It was phenomenal. And when the shoot was done, Shiro tried to climb down the stairs when she tripped and was about to fall, but thankfully due to Haru stepping in, he saved her and she was not injured in the slightest. But alas, now Haru had a fracture in his arm. All of them were really worried about him now, sure even started to cry over it. 
After everything was over, the next day at school, Kai was once again greeted by Abe, who had come in to take the updates of what had happened on the trip. According to Kai, the winner in this situation was Kachai, as Maru's personal camera shots were full of pictures with Kachai. Next, as Kachai, Maru and Shida were returning at his place to take care of him along with her maid, which was really sad news for Shida. Suharu was actually expecting something different to happen while Kachai was staying over at his place. But unfortunately that was not the case. Kachai was in fact taking actual care of him. Suharu asked Kai, who was on the phone for some advice. Kai was really of no help at that situation and as soon as he opened the bathroom door, he was greeted by Momo, Shida and Kachai all together. All of them once again were arguing over what was best for him. At night, all of them were seated in the living room together when Shida tried to call her mom but she didn't answer since she was still at work. The other two tried their best so that Shida wouldn't stay over. That was when Maru requested them to try to get along better when suddenly his bell rang and Momo ran to open the door while addressing herself as a Maru, meaning she referred to herself as his future wife. It was none other than the Shida sisters at the door. They had come over to give their sister some clothes to chance while she was staying over. Akane and Ai too were behaving really weird since the both of them had realized that they had feelings for Haru. They were trying to run away from him. Haru felt really bad, and Midori said that was probably because her sisters thought of him as a pervert and wasn't interested in talking to him at all. While Midori was about to leave, Haru once again made a joke about her not looking her age when she taught him a lesson and left his house. After her sisters left, Kuro was sitting there and once again whispered I love you to him, which made him get flustered and hit his head really hard. Soon, she got a call from her mom saying that she couldn't stay over the night at his house. So unfortunately, she had to go back to her own house. Meanwhile, Momo too got a call from the sister saying that she too couldn't stay over, even though she had explained everything to her in a letter. She was really disappointed, and sadly had to leave his house. While Momo was leaving, she was scared that Suharu was going to cheat on her, although they were not going out. After that, the other girls had enough of her and asked her to get inside the car, and she soon drove back home. After that, Shiro asked Maru to head back first, since she wanted to talk to Shida privately. After that, when Maru entered his house, he was surprised by Shiro's maid, Oragi. She was a really dumb girl, but she didn't like Maru at all. This was mostly due to the fact that she likes Shiro. Maru quickly understood that this girl was really dumb, but after that she said that he was mistaken if he thought that Shiro liked him, because all she had for him was respect. After that, Shiro entered and asked Maru to get ready to take his bath, where she would be helping him to wash his back. This idea shocked the both of them in different ways. Suharu was shocked and excited, but Oragi was disappointed and didn't want them to go inside the bath together. On the other hand, Shida was in her room alone, thinking about what Shiro had said to her privately. She had actually taunted Shida by saying that, all this time Shida had thought that she had an advantage over her since she lives closer to him, but now she was going to be staying at his house, which technically made her even closer to him. Shida was really worried and sad about what was going to happen. She didn't like how things were turning out at all. But after that, she became even more determined to not lose at all, and seemed even more motivated to defeat Shida. The next day, all the guys were really excited and welcomed Momo to their school. They were happy that Momo had joined their school officially but were really jealous of Suharu since he was the one with all these pretty girls. Momo followed him to his class too, which created a big problem for him since a group of guys wanted to beat him for being friends with Momo. That was when Shiro interrupted them and they backed off. Shiro advised Momo to stay away from him during the school hours if she wanted her big brother to stay safe. She listened and left his class. After that, Shiro was feeding her homemade lunch to Suharu since he wasn't able to eat it himself. Kuro was getting too jealous. Suddenly, as he was enjoying his meal, he got the feeling of a cold stare towards him from a distance. It was Aragi who went to the same school as them. This made him remember her words the other day and left the classroom immediately. At the staircase, Kuro followed him and took him to the terrace to have a private conversation with him. There she asked if they had done anything pervy the other night, since she couldn't trust him and Kachai was really pretty. Haru assured her that nothing was wrong and nothing at all had happened the other night, and she could trust him. But he let her know that she had actually helped him study and also they played Othello late till night and that was all that had happened. Suddenly, Haru teased her back, and she got really flustered. The next moment, both of them got a text from Kai to meet at the club room as he had something important to discuss with them as soon as possible. Actually, a famous magazine company had reached out to Shiro's dad, who wanted to conduct an interview and publish a video about Suharu revealing the real reason why he was absent from his work all these years. Shiro was all up for it, as she understood the real meaning of the project, but Kuro was against it, as it was really personal for Suharu and she had seen how depressed he was. Momo too agreed it wouldn't be that good of an idea since these companies are only after profit and no other reason. Suharu was having second thoughts and mixed feelings about the whole thing. 
Kai suggested that, if by chance the news was leaked from any other source, then he would not get any closure. On the other hand, if he did it by himself, things would be different that way. Kai had devised a perfect plan for the execution of their video, so that Suharu's emotions were not exploited by any other media house only as a hot topic. They decided their video would have a final true ending, which would be the continuation of Suharu's last work, The Child King. In this series, the child was a poor one, who lived with his mom and lost his mom to an accident one day. He was left only with a single relative. It was later revealed that his mom's death was a planned one, so he decided to take revenge on the culprit. Although he succeeded, he too had to suffer because of the same reason. So finally, Kai proposed that they film the continuation of The Child King by the Ultramarine Alliance, where they would do it for themselves by rejecting the offer from the media house. But now, they had to focus on their midterms first. Now, Shida had invited Kachai and Momo to a cafe to talk over and discuss something. All of them wanted the others to back down and soon. All of them started to blame each other for their actions. But ultimately, Kachai proposed that they all came to a common ground, where Shida had to stop saying I love you to Suharu, and Momo was to stop causing the unnecessary commotions that she always caused in front of everyone. And lastly she was to step back and let everyone take care of Maru in turns, where Aragi would be present. All of them agreed to it, and it was decided. After that, Momo proposed something else. This was not revealed, but after their discussion all of them were plotting something dangerous, and each one thought that they had the upper hand in this case. All of them, thus, agreed to it. The next morning, Aragi was seen doing something mischievous with Suharu. She had actually written her name over his plaster, and Suharu was still sleeping. He woke up with the commotion that was going on. She had written Shin the genius was here, which pissed Maru off and he woke up with a shock from the bed. After that, Aragi denied writing the things on his plaster, but clearly having the marker was clear proof of what was happening. When Maru was sure that she was the culprit, Aragi jumped on him and started writing even more different things on his hand. Suddenly, Kuro entered the room and was shocked to see Aragi on Maru. Aragi tried to blame Maru, but Kuro was furious and decided to teach her a lesson. Later, Shin was really upset, when the both of them were having their breakfast. Suddenly, Kai called him, revealing very bad news. Actually, a media house had published the story about Maru's disappearance, and had revealed the real reason why he retired as a child actor. It was shocking to see, and all of them were really pissed off and disappointed since Maru wasn't informed before this was being done to him. This news was probably going to be a new headline for the whole country. Not just one, now that the news was leaked, a lot many media houses had started publishing stories on the same. All these media houses were also publishing newspapers and different articles related to it. After that, later, all of them had gathered in their club room to discuss what was going to be their next move going forward. Hardy Shun had actually leaked this information to the media, which made Momo really pissed at him. Kai advised her to not do anything about it. If Momo would do anything to retaliate against him, then he would start throwing more dirt on her with more rumors. This was definitely the situation that they wanted to avoid. After a while, Kai announced that the best media house of Japan, the Japan Collect TV who streamed The Child King had reached out to him. They would make a documentary capturing Suharu's point of view, which would be aired on Japan Collect which would give them a better chance at reaching the audience of Japan. Suharu liked this plan and asked if his friends would help him crush them. After that, Momo suggested that since the three girls were involved in his past, it would be a good idea if the three of them acted as interviewers in order to bring back his memories and record for the documentary. Kai and Suharu liked this idea and agreed to it. Then, Kachai invited Suharu over to her house. Suharu quickly agreed to it. Her house was a beautiful bungalow. Both of them were seated at her bed, in her bedroom, with a camera in front of them which was going to record their conversation. Both of them were nervous in the beginning. But Kachai started her interviews with him, and he started answering these questions. He was mainly asked about his experience while working as the Child King. He explained how Shira was really special to her since childhood as she was the first one to treat him normally, as a friend. He was looking forward to acting in her script, and was glad he got the chance to do so after six years, at the Confession Festival. Kachai then tried to bring up some of his past memories, from when they were kids, once Suharu had tried to take her away from the house. Since she had no friends and didn't have any reason to leave the house, Suharu was an outgoing kid and wanted to show her the Tokyo Tower. Although she was scared at the beginning and really hesitated, she finally decided to follow him. They couldn't make it to the Tokyo Tower since they were young and were caught by the adults, but because of him, she got the courage to try something new. It was a memorable experience for both of them. As they were talking, they got really close to each other, but once again, they backed off. After that, Suharu suggested they check out the Tokyo Tower now. After that, they went out to the Tokyo Tower. When they returned home, Shiro seemed really happy and Aragi was really skeptical of him. 
so she interrogated him constantly. But actually nothing much has happened. Suharu showed her a picture of Shiro, to which she couldn't keep her calm, since according to her, Shiro looked too adorable to handle. Maru promised to give her the photos if she acted friendly towards him. She accepted it. But soon, when Maru gave the photos, she was back to her normal self. But once again, Maru had the upper hand since he had more pictures of Shiro. Meanwhile, Shiro was busy preparing dinner for everyone. At night when everyone was asleep, Kachai thought to herself that now finally, she had her first date with Suharu and after this date, Suharu once again would like to ask her out for sure. She started imagining all sorts of things with him. The next morning, Kachai was waking him up when she tried to get close to him. Suddenly, Momo entered and she was totally pissed off by her presence. With her arrival, Suharu too woke up. After that, Momo began accusing Shiro of doing something wrong in the absence of Shin, but she was only waking him up while Shin was making breakfast. Then Suharu asked them to leave, since he wanted to change. Momo then insisted on helping him change and started to undress him. It was really funny to watch how Momo forces herself upon Suharu every time. Shiro too, was shocked and thought Momo to be really perverted for doing such a thing. Momo then started to touch his abs, and she was impressed when she saw that his abs were well maintained. After a while, Shiro wanted to join in too, and the both of them were now touching his abs. All of a sudden, Shin had come upstairs to call everyone for breakfast. But the scene in front of her shocked her and gave her the wrong idea about the whole thing. She thought that he was doing something perverted with the both of them. Momo had visited him to take him somewhere special where they had a lot of past memories. Now, Suharu was confused as to where she was taking him. Momo thought about the days when he and Momo used to act together and when Momo was really close to him and his mother as well. She thought that this was her perfect plan to capture the attention of Maru, so that he would no longer think of her as a younger sister, but rather as a potential lover. After that, they reached the place where his mother's accident happened. Suharu wasn't mad, as he knew. Later or sooner, he had to face his fears and face this place. Momo started to record and ask him questions about his mother's death and everything that had happened, and what he went through. Even though he had witnessed his mother die in that scene, he decided to continue playing his part, as it would be the first and last time he acted beside his mother. It was the project that his mother had literally died for, so he finished filming the series. But when the filming was over, he felt all sorts of emotions rush through him, and he fell into deep depression as a little child. From then, he couldn't act whenever he thought about his mother, so he decided to stop acting. After saying everything, he felt really sad, but no tears came out of him. It was a bit weird, but Momo continued speaking. She wanted to say everything that was in her mind. She confessed that she was really sad when she heard about his mother's death, but she was also sad that there was nothing she could do about it. She soon started crying while describing her mother. Not sure how, but Suharu felt a lot of emotions within him and started to cry as well. It was after a long time that he felt this way. He couldn't stop his tears. Suharu hugged Momo tightly while crying. It was quite emotional for both of them. Maru was so emotional that he began crying while hugging Momo. The moment when he thought about his mother, it triggered a lot of suppressed emotions inside him. This led him to crying really hard on Momo's shoulders, while she was crying at the same time as well. After that, they returned back home. After they returned, Momo tried to tease him, but was teased by him instead. When he wanted to apologize to her, she demanded he kiss her to apologize properly. This was a bit odd for him, so obviously he tried to back off. Suddenly, Oragi came in and tried to stop their flirting, since they were not honoring the pact. They decided to use Shiro's childhood photos as a negotiation with her, so that she would keep quiet about it. The next day, at school, Kai let him know that Collect TV was planning to air the true ending on the day they released the documentary, and they had planned on hiring Shida and Kachai as their actresses since it would generate much more buzz and casting some random actress. Later, Shida met up with Maru and the both of them set out to a place which held a lot of their childhood memories. As Shida was taking him to their secret spot, she reminisced about the time she loved Haru. She had loved him since they were in elementary school. The main reason that she loved him was that there was no real reason. It just happened to her. When they were younger, Haru was just a troublemaker to her until second grade. By the time they reached fourth grade, he got his first role as the lead of a series, and suddenly he became really famous among everyone. But this didn't make him arrogant at all. He was still very down to earth, but as the days passed he became more and more isolated. But even after losing his mother, and falling into depression, when he visited her home, he still was the same Haru. Actually, he was so kind that he didn't let his mental state affect his relationship with others. All of his sides, bad, good, sad, happy, Shida had seen all of them. She knew Haru the best, and thus didn't realize when she fell in love with him. But there was one incident that changed everything between them. Once her mother was out for work, and she was supposed to take care of her sister since she was the eldest. This really pissed her off, as she was supposed to play the parental role for her sisters every time. 
She didn't like it at all. She decided to run away from her home for the first time. And that was when she saw Haru going off somewhere and she decided to follow him. When Kuro took him to the place, he instantly remembered the day when she had followed him to this place. That day, the both of them had entered the cave with a lantern and she was really impressed with this super cool secret base. Actually, Haru was afraid to be at home when no one else was there, so he tried to spend his time alone at this cave as often as possible. When things became too overwhelming for him, Kuro wanted him to come to her house instead. But her house was too lively for him. So when he returned back, he was back to the darkness. After that, Shida too told him why she ran away from her house. Maru tried to joke and make things lighter, but she got angry. After that, she revealed the real reason and what she was feeling. Maru, although couldn't relate to her problems, tried to comfort her and Shida too understood that there was nothing she could do about the fact that she was the firstborn. She also loved her sisters a lot, but sometimes things became a bit overwhelming for her. After that, Maru thanked him for being beside him during all times, and got a little emotional. Kuro too was glad that her feelings were understood by him and she too started to cry. At present, the both of them were sitting at the mouth of the cave and enjoying the view of the forest. Quietly, everything was peaceful and felt really nostalgic. This was the best memory for her. The sun was about to set, when the both of them were sitting together near the river bank. Once again, as they were sitting, Kuro confessed her love to him once again. She also added that the only reason she rejected him was to get even with him and she didn't think twice before rejecting him. After that, she continued to tell him that she hated him for rejecting him when she confessed her love to him before. But, she loved him even more than that. Her feelings of love for him were pure. Haru was angry at her at first, but was glad that he got to know the whole truth from her and that she finally opened up to him after everything that had happened between them. Hiroha proceeded to ask him for a definite answer. All sorts of things started to go through Haru's mind. Haru was so confused as to what he should say. It was not like he didn't love Kuro, but his mind was full of thoughts of Shiro and Momo. It was more like, it would be unfair towards Kuro and the others if he went into a relationship now, when he was not 100% sure about his feelings towards Kuro. After that, Kuro suddenly declared that his time was up. Actually, she had set up a secret rule. That if he took more than 10 seconds to respond, then she would not want any answer from him. She knew that his mind was full of thoughts of Shiro, which was the reason why she didn't want to hear an answer from him. Instead, she proposed to him the concept of a childhood girlfriend. Basically, now they had entered into a pact that they would start dating later, if the circumstances were right. Both of them didn't want to make things awkward between them. After so many years of friendship so acting like an almost couple was their way of keeping their relationship intact. They could hold hands, cheeks, shoulders, hips but no other things like kissing was allowed. Those kinds of things only meant that they were now officially a couple. Haru too didn't want his relationship to end with Kuroa, so he agreed to most of the terms and conditions, although he wanted to do some pervy things as well, which was rejected by her. Kuroa also wanted their relationship to be private. Actually, by this way, Kuroa could have a better chance at being his girlfriend, but if his efforts were lacking she might go away. After he reached home, he was preparing his ramen and looking at the script of the true ending. After everything that happened, he felt quite motivated to start his acting career and give his best at it. Once the two projects were released, Abe came to meet Kai in the clubroom. He wanted to clear up their initial misunderstanding, as he was deeply moved by his actions in the true ending and the documentary. After everything that had happened, Kai concluded that Kachai was the most disadvantaged in this position. During their negotiation, everything turned against her giving the other girls an upper end. On the other hand, Shida had deliberately backed off before Maru was about to reject her and proposed the idea about childhood girlfriend where they were more than friends but less than lovers. This gave her another huge advantage. But ultimately, Shida too was a desperate high school girl who could have saved her the extra trouble only if she had apologized to him. Shida had told everything to Kai and asked him to not share this information with anyone. So now Abe was as much as guilty as Kai and could be the potential subject to Kuroha's wrath. Eventually at their school, Maru became really famous. He was so famous that he now had a fan club and Shiro, Kuro and Momo were pissed off by this. In the true ending of The Child King, the protagonist Ren was seen sleeping in a coma. After six long years, he had woken up from a coma. And Shiro, Kuro, Momo had been waiting for him all this time. This indirectly signified what had actually happened to him in real life. The coma signified his disappearance from TV. And his comeback was signified by him waking up from the coma.